Now I love typography logos, but there are some crucial golden rules that you need to follow to ensure a typography logo is not only effective, but it doesn't break any laws, and I mean legal laws. Watch today's video to learn the golden rules of typography logos and some of the things along the way. So welcome back to Satori Graphics, and if you're new here, I'm an established designer with over 15 years of actual clientele work under my belt. I offer tutorials in Illustrator and also just general graphic design advice on this channel on a weekly basis. So do go ahead and subscribe if you want to excel as a graphic designer. So the first golden rule of typography logo design is to make sure that if you do elect to use a font instead of custom logo type, i.e. you actually just take a font straight from your font library, that you have the rights to use it, I mean the legal rights. This usually requires you that you either bought the font family or you have the font license that allows you to use their font for commercial uses. Now a great website for this is Font Squirrel, and as they have many many awesome fonts for free and you can also check if they're set up for commercial use by looking at the icons seen here on the screen. So make sure that you have the rights to use the fonts for your logo design that is, if you do decide to go with an actual font instead of custom logo type. Now the second point is maybe one of the most important golden rules for typography logos, and that is to make sure the style of the logo type fits the message of the brand or the business. A typography logo does not have a logo mark, it only uses typography, so every aspect of your logo type needs to reflect the brand's message. So how do you actually do that? Well, you do research into the business and also the industry they operate in. I like to use the example of Armani because yes, they do have a logo mark, but let's take a look at the typography version of their logo. The choice of logo type is sophisticated and it's serious as it's also a serif font and it appears high status. This is going to appeal to the target market of Armani who are often middle to upper class people in society. Armani would not function with a more playful and friendly font that was used for their logo type. So do make sure to keep in mind the brand's message and the target market. So the third golden rule for typography and logo design is to make sure the tagline, also known as the strap line, works together in perfect harmony with the main logo type. This may involve using contrast, so maybe a mix of serif and sans serif, or maybe have a wide kerning and tracking on the tagline in comparison to a tightly packed main logo type. But you need to make sure that both the tagline and the main logo type do work really well together as a team, and they both represent the brand's message together as a single logo design. The next golden rule can be applied to all logo designs, theoretically, but be sure to use grids when working on typography logos. Now you want everything to be as neat and as aligned as possible. And if you're serious about your career and your designs, you should take the time to give attention to aligning text and custom logo type. Grids are a perfect way to do this, and Adobe Illustrator has a built-in grid system. Actually, it has a few of them, to be honest. But you get my point, just use grids for your logo designs. So the penultimate golden rule for logo designing is to clean up your work after you finish the design itself. This means removing stray anchor points as they can often you know, be forgotten about and they can be all over your artboard without you even realizing it. But also to limit the amount of anchor points used on the logo type itself, while still keeping the design the way it should appear. Less is more when it comes to anchor points on a vector design, as long as the design does appear the way that it should. Now my last golden rule for typography logo designs is to make sure that it's original. Again, this can be applied to all logo designs, but do hear me out here. Typography logo designs do not have a logo mark, 
they have nothing else to aid them in their success as a logo. So your logo type and your design needs to be really, really original and it needs to stand out in its relevant niche. You don't want to stray away from your niche too much, but you want to stand out in the right way. Don't just search on Google and look for similar designs and then essentially just copy a logo with a few minor changes. That isn't a logo design process, that's more like an intelligent photocopying machine, which maybe will probably exist in the near future actually. But yeah, remember, if you want to keep learning essential skills as a graphic designer, and you want to keep elevating your awareness in terms of business as a designer, do subscribe to my channel for weekly graphic design content. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.